This is the D-Laval Auto Sampler and the purpose of today's video is to go over some basic tips for best use, uh, for most success, and of course best management practices to maintain this sampler in the best working condition as we're using it down the road. So I just want to talk about some of the parts and functions. So here at the top we have a milk line. This is the milk line that brings the milk over to the sampler. Coming out of the side we have another milk line with a coupler on the end. This is the milk return line. And we have a power cord. Okay. I don't recommend plugging the milk sampler in until we've gone through some basic setup here. Uh, so plugging the, the milk sampler is gonna be the, one of the last steps that you will do, okay? Let's put that down here. So when the milk sampler arrives on farm, you're gonna bring it into the robot room and you need to assess where to place it. You're going to want to place it close to the robot pump and you're going to have to determine the height. So some of these robot rooms will have a drop floor and the pump will be several feet off the ground. In those situations, we recommend putting the sampler on top of a table, something sturdy, um, that uh, brings us the height of the sampler close to the same height as the milk pump. If the milk pump is close to the ground in some of our classic robots or some of the older setups, it's quite common to see this, um, then you're going to want to place the sampler unit directly on the floor. From there, I recommend opening the back panel and having a look at what's happening inside here. So we have our milk line that I mentioned first. This is hooked up to the robot um, to the sample outlet valve off of the milk pump. Okay, so if this is a classic robot, it will be hooked up to the sample outlet valve off the main milk pump and uh, actively milk will actively be pumped over into the canister here. If this is a V300 series, um, it, we will also use a pump to bring milk over, but we will be bringing the milk over directly to this spaghetti small line right here, okay? But we're gonna skip that for now. We'll, I'll come back to V300s a little bit later in the video, but so let's assume we're dealing with a classic here and we have the milk being brought over by this line. It's actively pumped over by the milk pump. That's the only active portion that the robot is doing off of the milk pump there and it brings it over into the canister or receiving jar. Um, at this point, I recommend opening up the canister. So just undo the clamp here and have a look inside. So we're gonna pull off the lid and then the rubber gasket and have a look inside. So this has some moisture in it, that's okay. This is just moisture left over from the wash cycle, but we want to examine this to make sure it's free and clear of any debris, old milk, or anything that should not be in here. I wanna point out that this canister has two main portions. We have the big portion here and the small portion at the bottom. So this is to re receive the majority of the milk. So milk is pumped over and more milk than is needed is pumped over from the robot. Okay, so as the cow is milking, the milk is collected into the receiving jar on the robot. After the cow is finished milking, that milk inside the receiving jar is mixed, and then a portion of that milk is brought over to this canister. Okay, from that point, excess milk is removed. So after the cow has finished, or the, the milk has finished being removed from the uh, receiving jar on the robot, it then is going to remove excess milk from the milk return line here. So as you can see by the placement, any milk above this point is going to be removed and milk below is going to stay. So just what's in this small portion down here is our sample size. Okay. I would next like to point out all these various pinch lines that these milk lines are sitting into. So these pinch valves are important. They're, they're what controls wh where the air can flow and which ones are working at any given time. I usually like to push them all as soon as I get working back here just to make sure they, they are free and moving properly. Uh, winter time in particular, these can get a little bit of moisture in them and then they can freeze up and, and then not want to work. So just make sure everything's clearly moving properly. The next step I like to do is readjust the lines. So as you can see, by this pinch valve here, it stays sort of in a permanent pinch. So when I pull this line out, you can see it's got a little bit of a kink in there. So I recommend moving it to a new position every milk test. 
So you just want to move it slightly over. You don't need to go too far, just a, a centimeter or so each way. That will allow it to be in a different spot each time so it's not getting permanently kinked in any one spot. Um, I recommend doing that with all of them, this one as well. The airline's not a big deal because the airline stays permanently open and it only actively pinches when the robot is commanded to do so. Um, the next step I want to point out is... Uh, checking out this spaghetti line here. So this is the line that if we're going to run into problems, we're probably most likely to run into here because of its size. So this is a very small line that moves the milk from the sample spot through the pinch valve through here and then into the back where the sample bottles are. So I like to gently, slowly, gently remove the line from the reel and then just examine it. You want to make sure there's no um, leftover pieces in here. Um, Mid-test, sometimes you can get a little mastitis from a cow or sand from a sand bedded barn that can be left in here. If this is run through a proper wash cycle, it shouldn't be a problem. It should be cleared out, but sometimes a little bit of moisture after the wash cycle has been left behind, and that moisture can freeze in the wintertime or cause other problems, so I recommend just examining it. When you're ready to put it away, just pull a little bit of line through so we have a slight bit of slack here and then slowly allow the reel to do back up. We wanna make sure it doesn't fall off the reel or in otherwise cause any problems. Okay, so just nice and slow. We want a little bit of slack here, but not too much, okay? The next step I'm gonna point out is if we were working with a B300 series robot, we would bypass this canister and the milk return line and we would be working directly with this spaghetti hose here. So at this point, we would need to remove this from the bottom because the spaghetti line is gonna hook up directly to the milk pump on the V300. That would be the SSO, the sample single sample outlet pump. And um, we're gonna need a little bit more slack than what I have here. So at this point, I would, once again, pull this reel and pull the line off the reel, grab a lot, a little bit more slack there, and then slowly feed it back on, okay? So now we have a lot more slack to deal with. I'm going to feed it out the opening here by the drain and then put it back into the pinch valve. So specific to V300s, the milk pump line is going to hook up directly to here. Okay, that's why we wanna feed it out so we can close this door. And then it comes through the pinch valve and to the reel and to the back side. okay? So at this point, we're gonna have a look in the back. Over here, we have the black box in the corner, which contains the motors that control these rods. So these rods help the sample position over top of each bottle so we can sample up to 70 cows in an every other system or more if we are doing every bottle row. Um, before I hook up the power cord, this is why I said I don't mention, I don't recommend hooking up the power cord right away. I want to just check these rods to make sure they move freely, both of them. So both the short axis here and the long axis. And this is, the reason I recommend this is because when you're cleaning up the sampler at the end of a milk test, moisture water from cleaning up in here can get into these rods and particularly in the winter time, it can freeze and then it physically is unable to move. And when you hook up the power cord, the first thing this does, this motor is it starts moving and it tries to find its home position. And if this is physically blocked for some reason and the motor is trying to move, but it can't because this is blocked, you run the risk of burning out the motor. So I'm just gonna manually reel this out a little bit so we can have a peek back here. So when the power is hooked up, as I mentioned, this moves and you hear this sort of um, whirring or, or movement um, and as it's finding home. And the way it's finding home is on the side of the box, we have these magnets here and they, they figure out their position based on these magnets is how close it is to the back and how close it is this way as well. So these magnets on occasion do need some maintenance. They, they shouldn't run into any problems, but every once in a while you can have small little metal debris um, 
metal and sand or metal filings or things like that can sometimes stick to these magnets and occasionally the motor will have troubles finding where home is because there's metal blocking the magnets but i recommend just moving it just enough to make sure that you know it's free and able to move and then when you hook up the power cord and it moves around it's going to find home and you don't have to worry about any damage happening to the motors okay after sampling is over as i mentioned before these need to run through a full and complete wash cycle including the dry stages of the wash cycle before on un being unhooked but we want to unhook them before the next cow comes in for milking because if we do not unhook them before the next cow comes in for milking the milk return line can have a little bit of milk backflow into it um, and then the line has and the coupler has then become dirty uh, but we, so we recommend unhooking them directly following a, a, a wash cycle and we also need to manually clean the outsides of this they need to be free of all milk and manure before moving from farm to farm so i recommend using a hose or a bucket with some soapy water and you just want to make sure everything in here is clean for the most part this area doesn't get too dirty but as the drain is functioning this is the drain in the corner in the home position as it's functioning you get a small bit of splatter so sometimes you need to wash this area but be wary of this is a motor in here. We do not want to spray water directly at this motor, okay? So if you need to clean this area, this is where it's most recommended to use a brush or a cloth and clean rather than spraying with a hose at our motor. But this tray easily can be removed and sprayed. These walls could be sprayed down uh, and just make sure it's clean. Closing the lid, you wanna make sure everything on the outside is free and clear of milk manure as well. Again, keeping in mind, we have a lot of electronics happening back here. This is our electronic box. So we do not want to be spraying water in this area. And we really shouldn't have to. The only time we might ever get milk in here is usually by us as we're moving one of these hoses or, or handling them. But so this should stay clean. But worst case scenario, if it did get dirty, we just want to wipe it down with a cloth or a brush rather than spraying it because there's just far too much going on in here to be spraying it with a hose, okay? So putting this back together, as I mentioned, we have the canister, we have the rubber gasket, so seat that on there. And then you'll notice that the canister lid has a notch and so does the canister itself. So line these two notches up and then those notches need to be aligned into the corner like that, okay? If they're not properly aligned into the corner here, sometimes when you close this canister, the seal is not quite right because they're, it's physically not able to seal properly. So make sure you line that up correctly and then snug this down nice and tight so it's properly uh, air, air sealed. Okay, and it, again, you know, if you're going to a new farm or you're not familiar with the wash cycle on farm or what was done, it's not a bad idea before moving these to the next place just to open up the canister after the wash cycle. Make sure it did wash properly. Make sure the water did exit properly. Just visually examine these lines. Make sure that they look in good condition. No water, no milk, no debris, no holes. The whole system functions on air pressure. So if we have any holes in any of these lines, it's not going to work correctly, okay? So just we want to make sure they're in the best condition that they can be before we start a milk test and as soon as the milk test is over before we give it to somebody else to use.